Alright, so I've just done my substitution. I've just put that in for cosine and put that in for sine. Okay? Now remember, I said things are going to get a little bit worse before they're going to get better. We're used to this, right? When we do trig identities, like regular trig identities, you're like, okay, sometimes you've got to add something and subtract it, or multiply it and divide it to make things make sense. Okay? And it's going to happen a little more before we get there. Okay? Have a look at what I've got here. I notice there's all these powers of x. This is just a fancy polynomial, right? Well, the normal way I write polynomials is with the powers in order, right? So what I need to do is, you can see these guys here, they actually interleave, right? They're a series, that it's, it's one series. It's just some of them have i's on them. Does that make sense? So I'm going to write the whole thing, but I'm going to start from 1. The next term should be, going in terms of order, in degree rather, is um, ix. Dude, that's, that's the x to the 1 term, oh. right? Oh, I need that. Okay? Where's the x squared term? It's here. Minus. Yep. And then the next one, all the odd ones have i's on them. And actually it's a minus, I believe. It's a minus, right? Yes? Is that okay? Uh, this next one over here. There. Where's the 5? It's a plus. Where's the 6? It's a minus. I think if I do one more, it'll be enough. Minus. Okay. Whoops. Okay. Now, admittedly, you can probably look at that and think, hmm, not really seeing much there, okay, and that's fine. What I want you to notice with me is that the signs do something weird. Do you notice the signs do something weird? There were two series here, each of which alternated um, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, <coughs> minus. So when you put them together, have a look at the signs now. In fact, if you've got another hi uh, um, color, highlight this with me, right? Look at the signs you've got, plus, plus, and then you get um, minus, minus. And then you get another plus, plus, and then another minus, minus. And the next ones will be plus, plus, and then minus, minus. Plus, plus, minus, minus. Plus, plus, minus, minus? Have I seen anything else today that I did plus, know. plus, minus, minus? Like, plus, plus. Minus, minus, and then plus, plus, and then minus, minus. Do you remember that with me? Do you remember it? This is so weird. So, so what's going on here? Stay with me, please. I'm begging you, right? What's going on here? And of course, I didn't expect you to notice that. I'm giving you the, the whirlwind tour, right? What that suggests to me is that, like, you notice there's some eyes here, like there's one here, one here, one here, etc. What that suggests to me, and these signs suggest to me, is that there are some extra eyes hiding in there. There are extra eyes hiding in there, right? Like, it's as if we're multiplying by i over and over again. In fact, if you have a look, for instance, this is a bit suspicious. See this one here? This is x to the 4, right? And it's come back to plus 1. Well, which one did that correspond to? That's i to the 4, right? Side of the four. If this is out of the four, well, just carry it with me. How many eyes do you think are supposed to be here? I think there are five. Because look, there's the one that's already there, plus another four. Because remember, multiplying by i to the four doesn't change a number because it's just one. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rewrite this with some extra eyes in it. Okay. But just be careful. So. an R out the front. Uh, how many I's are there in the first term, by the way? Zero. There are zero. I to the zero. How many X's are there? Zero. Also zero. I'm just writing it like that so I can see the pattern just a little better. Uh, have a look at this one. Well, it's already got the right number, right? It's just I to the one, X to the one. Ah, uh, now, hold on a second. There are I's hiding in here, aren't there? Right? There should be how many of them? There should be two I's, I squared. But if I, if I take out an I squared, that, that sign gets changed, right? So this would be plus I squared X squared on two fact. Are you with me? Yes? Oh, do you need the zero factor and one factor? Yeah. Because zero factor is just one. You mean this one here? Yeah. And this one here? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's fine. Yep. Okay. <laughs> How about this one? How many I's are there there? Three. There are three. 
Okay, I'm starting to get a bit sick of this right now, right? The pattern took me a lot longer to write out this time because I was like, oh, it, keep, it keeps changing. But here, it's like, oh. Oh, uh, this is it. It just keeps on doing the same thing. The next one will be i to the 4x to the 4 on 4 factorial, and then i to the whatever, right? So I'm just going to go dot 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 now. Okay, I can write this a little better. I can write this a little better. Um, because both terms on the top in the product, right, are having the same power, right? Therefore, I can write these as um, i x to the power of naught, right? And i x to the power of 1, uh, yeah. And i x to the power of 2, 2. You get the idea, right? So this this function of x, right? This function of x is not just a function in x. It's a function in i x, right? I x appears every single time, right? So I could replace it with a different label, a different label, right? So what I'm going to do, I need to introduce, I need, I need more letters, right? I'm basically, I'm running out of letters, okay? So I'm going to call this, just stay with me, I'm going to call this f of capital X. Can you do that with me? I can't use Z because that means something else. I don't want to use Y because that's just confusing. I'm going to use capital X. So basically, this is R times X to the naught on naught factorial, X to the 1 on 1 factorial, X squared. I'm going to do one more. You'll see why in a second. Dot, dot, dot. Okay. 